Howdy. I'm smoking a maple hardwood pipe. If you've never had the opportunity to smoke a hardwood pipe, you're missing out on a great deal of smoking pleasure. Howdy pipe smokers, my name's Don Gilmore, pipe maker for Don Warren Pipes. I hope you'll join me for this video segment, Hardwoods Easy Smoking Pipes. One of my pipe customers once asked me, why would anybody make or smoke a maple pipe? Well, I hope to answer that question, as well as give you some information about why various hardwoods are excellent choices for pipe making, and some of the qualities that those various hardwoods add to your smoking pleasure. As you all know, the tobacco plant is a North American species. When the Europeans first arrived in this continent, in the late 1400s, they discovered Native Americans smoking tobacco in a variety of pipe making materials. Soon after their arrival, they began cultivating tobacco and exporting it to England and the rest of Europe. By the 1570s, German pipe makers were experimenting with a variety of European hardwoods such as acacia, alder, birch, boxwood, Buckthorn, cedar, cherry, elder, elm, hazel, hornbeam, linden, maple, mulberry, olive, poplar, sycamore, and not until the 1830s was briar used commercially to make tobacco pipes. So Briar is actually a relative newcomer to the pipe smoking world. One of the obvious differences between Briar and hardwoods is the density. Briar is very dense material and thus more fire resistant than European or American domestic hardwoods. However, that depends on what part of the tree or shrub you use to make a pipe. Root burls from oak, walnut, maple, and manzanita are extremely dense and rival that density of briar. The other side of the coin is that a less dense wood is a better insulator. Therefore, a pipe made out of a domestic hardwood tends to remain cooler to touch than a briar pipe. Another difference between briar and hardwoods are that briar grows in a radial grain out from the center of the crown or the root burrow, whereas most trees and shrubs have a vertical grain that grows in a ring around the trunk. These are what we call linear woods, and there are several aspects to the linear growth of domestic hardwoods that affect pipe making. One is that you get some very interesting variations in grain and pattern as well as color. The second is that the linear grains tend to split easier. I'd now like to talk about some of the North American hardwoods that I use in pipe making. There are essentially two ways to acquire your pipe making material. One is lumber yard or specialty hardwood suppliers that will supply you with kiln dried lumber. It's dried to about a 19% moisture content and is dry enough to make pipes that will not split or crack. The other way is to go to a specialty store or online and acquire blocks of wood that are cut for the purpose of turning on a lathe. These blocks tend to be thicker, but not as planks. They are chunks. This happens to be maple burl. This is figured maple. 
walnut, birch. Uh, one thing to note is if you go to a good specialty store, they will often have their material marked with the date that the wood was harvested. This birch block was harvested in May of 2015. It is currently less than seven months since harvest and it's still much too moist to make a pipe out of. This block will have to sit in my shop and air dry slowly for the next year or two before I can use it. This hickory block is marked 1213, so it is almost three years since it has been harvested and it is dry enough now that I can use it for pipe making without worrying about the moisture content. Here's a block of mountain laurel. As you can see, it's got a lot of interior voids and cracks. Some of these are due to drying, but some of that is just naturally part of the formation of the root bowl. 